they do. Jezebel will never take the side of anyone, okay, unless it's to, um, it's for their benefit. They will take the credit of somebody else's um, idea or action. I told you that they're pushing and dominant. What else can I tell you? The Jezebel spirit operates behind the Kundalini spirit as well. You guys, I have to do a part two to this video. Okay? And I'm going to pick up where I left off. All right? Please stay tuned. It's going to be how to discern if one has a Jezebel spirit part two. And I'm going to, I'm telling you the characteristics and then I'm going to go into discerning a Jezebel spirit. I kind of told you a little bit now, but I'm going to go into discerning a Jezebel. I want to spend just a few minutes talking about the spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel knows how to make eunuchs, to make her own followers. I want to spend a moment and I want to talk about this. How does the Jezebel spirit make eunuchs or followers out of people? Now we know from the, from the, from the Bible that that there is such a thing as a Jezebel spirit. We understand about the control. We understand about the manipulation. But how would Jezebel target you? How could the spirit of Jezebel get you to submit to her even when you're in a local church someplace? Let me give you some of her tools. Now, now some of the things that I'm going to talk to you about... It took me 25 years to discover. Maybe you are, maybe you already know these things. Maybe you don't. And, and hopefully, and I pray this will happen, that the things that I say to you today on this broadcast, that God will give you even more, and then you can share it with me by email. One of the things that I've noticed about the spirit of Jezebel, she has to create some sort of a tie, some sort of a bond between her and her victims. And so what Jezebel is really good at, and she's really good at this, what I call probing. She'll probe you. She'll like circle around you looking for that door, that gateway, so that she can come in and grab something in you to create this bond between, between you and her. For example, have you ever heard this before? Are you all right? Are you okay? I just feel like there's just something wrong and I'm not quite sure what it is. So what is, what is Jezebel trying to do? Jezebel's trying to look for that hurt, something that hurts you. Maybe it was in your childhood or maybe it was something recent. Maybe your, maybe your husband left you, abandoned you. Maybe your boyfriend abandoned you. Uh, maybe something, ha your parents did something to you. I mean, something happened that hurt you. Maybe someone insulted you or you lost your job. Who knows what it, it could be a myriad of things. The point is it's something that says she can grab onto. She's looking for that, 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 that hurt, that pain. It's always the same, whether it's a hurt or a wound. It could also be um, something you're very sorrowful about, something you're very concerned about. It could be something you're afraid about, insecure about. But she's looking for that. Now, here's the thing. If she finds it, she'll latch on to it and focus on it. Because here's what will happen. She'll say, oh, that was so terrible that that happened to you. I mean, that's so awful. And I've even seen the Jezebel spirit begin to e even pray and, uh, and, and put, put, put her arms around you and weep with you over your pain. So instead of Jezebel le uh, pointing you to Jesus and getting you to cast all your cares on Jesus who cares for you, what she'll do, she'll say, explain it to me. Let me, let me hear all about it. And so here's what you do. You start pouring out your heart. And, and instead of her pointing you to Jesus or taking all those pains and leaving them on the altar, what she'll do then is she'll begin to make you feel like that she can identify with your pain. So, she, so that spirit is really um, taking the place of the Lord because he himself bore our infirmities. Amen. So what Jezebel does is she, she, um, she in order to create a eunuch out of you, she's got to find that pain. She's got to find that hurt. And then she makes you feel like that, that finally now Jezebel or this person understands me more than any, anybody else. So she looks for hurts and wounds. 
She looks for pain. She might even look for something that you love. Perhaps uh, maybe you love you, you have a love for a particular person or a child or something. And uh, and so Jezebel will, will begin to see, OK, you've got that love. So uh, and that love's maybe been violated. So what she'll do, she'll use that anything that she possibly can to connect with you. That's what she's going to do. Now, if your faith is in Jesus and you look to him, he's the author and finisher of your faith. You don't need her. Then what will happen is that those all those doors are closed. Because, see, no minister should draw you unto that minister. Every minister of the gospel of Jesus should point you to Jesus. He's the author and finisher of your faith. Okay, now watch this. We've got to go on from here. Eunuchs draw their strength from Jezebel. They draw their strength. And, you know, um, the Bible says, let the weak say that I am strong. You know, we can feed on the word that makes us strong. We can hang around with, with other strong brothers and sisters. But what Jezebel will do is she'll make you feel like that you have no strength outside of her. So now if you're, you need to catch yourself with this because if that's happening to you, if, in other words, if you're, if you, if you don't feel strong because this particular person's not around you, then something's wrong with that because you should be drawing your strength from the Holy Ghost. You should be drawing your strength from the Word of God, not from some person that prays for you or witnesses to you or can relate to you or can identify with you. You don't draw your strength from that person. If that's happening to you, then you're already in it. You're already in Jezebel's spider web and you need to break out of that relationship as fast as possible. Um, here's another thing. Jezebel's a teacher. And uh, what that means, not only does she teach, but she'll explain everything you Every, she'll answer every question you have. She'll explain what the preacher was talking about, what the man of God said on the radio or the television. She'll begin to explain it, explain it, explain it. And it's, it's another way that she builds in you because now in order for you to be, to, to know anything, you've got to go to her to, to get her side of the story or her opinion or what says Jezebel. And this is how she begins to build eunuchs bit by bit, little by little, little by little. And Jezebel will will begin to make it feel like you can't even talk to God. You've got to get her approval first. This is something that Jezebel does. So we have to be very careful with this. I've seen I've seen people in churches where they have to go they have to get Jezebel to okay it or to explain it and th they have these misplaced loyalties where they look to Jezebel and not to their own leaders in the church. And so this is the spider web of Jezebel, how she builds eunuchs. And what, and in the process of building eunuchs, she'll suck your strength right out of you. Bit by bit, little by little, you find yourself weaker and weaker. And the only time you ever feel any strength is when you have her approval or she's around or it looks like she's approving what you're doing. Now, let me just tell you some of the things that a eunuch will do, because hopefully, and I, and I pray that you're not a eunuch, but you know what? It's possible that you've seen other people in your family or in your church that they're starting to fall prey to, to Jezebel and become eunuchs. Now, here's the deal. One thing I found out about eunuchs is a eunuch is a eunuch is a eunuch. A eunuch is not strong. A eunuch has no strength of its own. A eunuch will, will always has to pull strength from somebody else. And one thing about Jezebel's eunuchs is that the eunuchs are, will not only um, submit to, uh, or I should say, um, guard one Jezebel, but they guard every Jezebel in the whole church. And so we have to understand some of the eunuchs are also dangerous, okay? So we don't want anybody to become eunuchs because a eunuch cannot advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, here's one thing a eunuch will do. A eunuch will always guard the peace of Jezebel. And so we see that many times where, you know, someone in authority, someone has the ability to say no, begins to move in an area. So what do the eunuchs do? They get all freaked out about it. And what do they want to do? Instead of guarding the leaders of that ministry, they'll go and they'll, they'll start to guard the, uh, the Jezebels that are around that ministry. So we have to, so that's one of the signs of a eunuch. The next thing that eunuchs would do is eunuchs like to guard the peace of Jezebel and eunuchs have misplaced loyalties. They'll be more loyal to the eunuch in, I mean, to the Jezebel in the church, and they will be to the leaders in the church. Something's wrong with that picture. Here's another thing, too. A eunuch, a eunuch is always looking for Jezebel for permission. Permission to do this. Permission to do that. Permission to, to you know, to uh, obey the pastor, for example, in the church. Or to obey, uh, you know, your husband or your wife. See, that's not biblical and that's not correct. 
people that you, people that are eunuchs, they look to get Jezebel to approve everything about what's going on in their life. I mean, this is a really crazy thing, but it gets it gets it gets weird, perverted, and twisted as as people get further and further into this spider web of Jezebel's control. Another thing that eunuchs do is they make things hard. Uh, for example, uh, let's say there's someone in the church and that's in leadership and they begin to go and try to get things done in a particular department. Well, if there's a eunuch there, or, or more than one eunuch, they'll make it difficult to get anything done. So my point today is this. We have to, we have to understand that Jezebel knows how to create eunuchs. So we have to guard our hearts with all diligence, okay? We have to be careful who we let into our heart, okay? We don't want to let some Jezebel spirit come and grab a hold of some hurt and wound that we haven't laid on the altar yet, and we have to guard ourselves and not become eunuchs. Well, I really, I really hope that this has helped you today. Um, and if it has, please send me an email, um, office at jonasclark.com. Come over and visit us over on the website, www.jonasclark.com. And I pray that together we can stop the hindering influences of the Jezebel spirit in our lives and in our ministries. God bless you and thank you for watching today. Chapter 9 And Abimelech, the son of Jerubel, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren, and communed with them, and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it is better for you either that all the sons of Jerubbaal, which are threescore and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, he is our brother. And they gave him threescore and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Baal Birith, wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. And he went unto his father's house at Ophrah, and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubbaal, being threescore and ten persons, upon one stone. Notwithstanding, yet Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbaal, was left, for he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together in all the house of Milo, and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gerizim, and lifted up his voice and cried, and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, should I leave my fatness, wherewith by me they honor God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, Come thou, and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou, and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my vine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come.